This is Fantology. You may have heard of us. All right, what's up, Strongs of Heron Hall? This is Steven, your host with Fantology Podcast, along with my lifelong friends, Josh and Ryan, talking about episode seven of House of the Dragon. And uh, do you guys like this episode? Could you see it enough to know if you liked it or not? Just immediately into the controversy. Is that what we're doing? I mean, look, I'm really liking the show. But okay, so previously this had bugged me a little bit, but I kind of dismissed it as like maybe my TV isn't calibrated. Maybe I maybe I need a nicer TV or something to be able to see it. But after this one and like everyone else is complaining about it. So I'm going to complain about it too because I want to see the thing and I can't. I um, actually didn't have any issues on my TV. It's not an OLED either. It's uh, just, I think, a 4K LCD, I I believe. I didn't have any issues on it. I did, though, on the episode before this, I think, have some issues, but I was watching it on my other TV. Mm -hmm. So I think that it is very TV dependent, which I don't think it should be. I mean, there is like an artistic argument between you know, filmmakers, how they want the tone and, you know, setting the tone of the show. But Uh I think that bottom line, you should have visibility regardless. Yeah. Yeah. So here's my kind of theory on what happened. And I haven't heard anybody else say this, so maybe I'm dead wrong. But for the first few episodes, it hasn't really been a thing for the last few. But um, my my HDR on my TV would like wait to kick in until like halfway through the episode because Uh like, the stream like I, I think it was just too many people were watching it so hbo was like lowering the, the stream quality uh-huh. and so that might have been happening to some people because i remember that for sure happened on uh the long night was that the name of the episode yeah in season eight yeah. i know that for sure happened is that some people's streams just got really downgraded and that's mm-hmm. one of the first things that like falls off along with like like they'll keep resolution but sometimes the the hdr data doesn't come through um so that so i need happened. to just test it again right after this and see what the, what we can blame maybe um, i mean I, I watched it like 20 minutes after it was released and i didn't notice it right but that that can have a lot to do on like you know just the you were one of the lucky few who got the hdr particles yeah. ryan and oh, you took them up from okay. me <laughs> um Anyway, I don't know. I, I did go back and uh, watch a few minutes of it on my phone today just because I was reading a bunch of the controversy. So I was like, hmm, I wonder how oh. it looks on my phone. And it looked pretty good on my phone. And that was like in daylight. Like, uh, I mean, I wasn't outside, but I was like, yeah, at, at but your front. phone's going to have a nice like OLED screen, right? Kind of. I have the Pixel 6, not the Pro. And so like the screen isn't the, it's not like quite a flagship screen on the pick, like the non-pro version. Okay. So it's, it's just like a, like it's a 1080, 1080 screen. It's not like 4k. Mm. So it's not like the best screen on any phone out there, but yeah, it's a decently good screen. Um, anyway, I don't know. I want to get I, back to Steven's yeah. initial question though, before he asked about the lighting, how, how we enjoyed it. Uh-huh. I, I did enjoy this show a lot. It wasn't, too intense for me it was definitely intense but um i i liked it especially the ending nice the ending was a a twist a surprise for uh book readers for for those who are familiar with fire and blood because correct me if i'm wrong ryan because i think you read fire and blood most recently but leonard just kind of dies in fire and blood and doesn't really give any details right Um, so I actually looked this up again just before, because I I wanted to remember, even though I I did, you're correct. I did just read the book and, um, in the book, he is killed by his former lover, Sir Carl or Coral. Oh, really? And, um, yeah. And in the book, there's two accounts, one by, uh, the septum or mass. I forget whether he's a septum or a maester. Uh Um, and he claims that it was jealousy because Leonor took a young lover and then, or a different lover. And then Mushroom is the one who claims that he kills him, or Damon is the one that orchestrated his death. Mm. But both were wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, if, if we're going by the show canon. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
That's he, I mean I don't think he's gonna come back. I think this is kind of the end for him. I, I hope it I hope that is the end. I hope that it's like you know they ending. gave him like a somewhat happy ending, like where he can kind of be free of his father's expectations and trying oh. to fulfill duty. Uh, so far, I would choose his ending over any of the any like the fates of the other characters who are just I mean, not not related to what happens in the book, but just like how they're all stuck in this perpetual battle between sides of the family. And uh-huh. it doesn't seem like the place to be right now. Yeah, I would take his ending over like any Game of Thrones character ending ever <laughs> literally sailing off into happiness with his lover like it's a pretty mm-hmm. good ending for anyone feel better for his parents though like his parents now think that they're childless yeah although they yeah yeah although they do have two sets of grandkids that are yeah wait. it's yeah especially for his mom because his mom was kind of like i've given up on the throne like i've moved past it and she just really wanted what's best for the kids but her husband really wanted you know, he was the one who kept clinging to the uh-huh. fact that she should have been queen and their children will be like sit the Iron Throne. And so it, it kind of makes me wonder. I mean, so far, Corliss has seemed like a good guy and everything. But like, do you think like, is there any indication that he just married? Is it Renera? Rainy. Reina. Right. Ra- Reina. Oh, Rainus. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it Get ever straight? <laughs> <laughs> is it ever um, considered that he did just marry her hoping that she would like somehow inherit the throne or no don't and remember not in the books but and the great the- council happened like when they were children yeah right? but still like it seems like he was he's always considered that she like should have another like shot at taking it you know even though the series got the throne i think the great council takes place after she was already married did it it was whenever yeah. jaharis was like old about to die so possibly and eh, we probably shouldn't try to get into details really that not we're that, not gonna okay. understand it's really not that important just he, yeah. he does seem a little bit power hungry you know uh, in general i haven't really liked honestly i haven't really liked the take that they've put on corliss because i thought he was really cool from the westeros history in George R. R. Martin's written out Fire and Blood, but in the show, yeah, he's like not as cool. He kind of comes across as power hungry and not super supportive well, and like not book, super smart or savvy or I, I, in general, like all the reasons why I liked him in Fire and Blood are not really apparent in the show. Well, I mean, in, in the book, it doesn't like go into people's personality, uh, like not Corliss's personality too much, especially I feel like maybe not until yeah. later on in the dance of dra- the, the dragons. Um, but, but I mean, I think the book does summarize like he goes on like, I think seven epic voyages and, you know, he basically makes so much money for his house that it becomes the wealth the wealthiest wow. house in Westeros and it's finally when he decides to like retire from going on these epic voyages that he settles down and marries Rhaenys I think he's wow. like in his 30s and so um a lot of the a lot of this show or all of this show takes place after he's had like these epic cool voyages. achievements which probably would have been more interesting to follow him Fair good argument yeah, we just don't see the reasons why I like him. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, okay, let's let's jump back a little bit to the beginning of the episode, should we? Because we kind of just Okay. You know, the awkward down. funeral. Yeah. Why so why did Damon laugh? Do you guys think? Why did he what? Laugh. Why did he laugh? Like when the the priest guy was like reading, like going through the funeral rites and he just like oh, starts oh, kind of oh, oh, oh. before okay i was immediately thinking to the uh funeral reception afterwards which was awkward so if i remember correctly damon laughs when it's it's there is it corliss's brother um who's doing the rites i think vaymond is his name yeah and he I, I think he says something about blood being thick and tying it together and 
maybe Damon laughs because of the fact that they're all there tied together by blood, but mm. they, there's a huge rift between some of them. Mm. Gotcha. I don't know that that's just, that's that just kind of, of me trying to think of what it could have been, but. Okay. That makes sense. I, yeah, I, I think he was talking about blood. He was talking about like something about blood and the, and the ties of blood and stuff. So that he was just yeah, Damon's fell, you know, Damon does not feel connected to his family at all never has okay makes sense hmm. yeah most of damon's actions are really kind of up for interpretation you have to kind of read into it because he's not one to really offer too many explanations for what he's doing and why hmm. I, I i definitely get this feeling like sometimes damon seems like kind of reasonable because he's talking he, like I think mostly when he's uh, hanging out with Rhaenyra he's, he seems kind of reasonable but then when he's like interacting with people outside of the Targaryen families he seems like just unstable and weird and you know he does things like laughs in the middle of a funeral and uh -huh. or causes his wife to die um, it, he just does lots of crazy stuff that like there's sometimes where i'm like oh i could like him and then other times where i'm like nope definitely still psycho. don't like him <laughs> yeah yeah um the the reception the funeral reception was really good too that was that was one where like i paused it like three times just to like make sure i was getting everybody's character straight and like right. relation straight and making sure understanding that... what all of the simmering tensions meant yeah everywhere yeah you can uh -huh. kind of talk through what everything meant it, it uh, was it was strange to me because like I, I felt like there was this tension like underlying everything um but i didn't understand why they were like rushing the kids off to bed they're like go to sleep like like i thought something was gonna go down because didn't you see how dark it was it was nighttime past their bedtime oh you okay you couldn't see anything that's how you know it's dark the sun's going down i i think in a serious answer to that question i think that they they were starting like uh aegon was starting to get really drunk and then um like he that's his name right aegon the aegon one. aegon yeah, is basically get, joffrey yeah i mean not he exactly as, but he like, doesn't seem nearly as crazy as joffrey so far at least I, equally annoying like equally dislikable at this point like well joffrey gets worse but jo I feel like Joffrey was over there torturing people like he's not that bad. yet. So I, I do uh, see yeah. some similarities in that. I mean, Aegon, he doesn't seem like he's definitely not power hungry. You know, yeah. when in the last episode, Allison was like, he's like, she's like, your sister will be king or queen. And he's like, so what? Like, isn't that how it's always how it's always been? But like she, I think, is, you know, instilling in him this like fear for his life that that auto high tower has kind of instilled in her is like uh -huh. if he's not king then your lives are pretty close to being forfeit so does he understand that and is just choosing Maybe to he's... ignore it or i i mean i just read it as like he's pompous and entitled and think... doesn't really take that threat seriously I think he's kind of starting to understand it or if not, he's starting to like understand his mother's hatred of them because at least like in the last episode, they were playing together. The Rhaenyra's children were, you know, uh -huh. playing with Aegon to pull a prank on Aemond. Um, Whereas in this one, they're, they're not even like associating together right. in any way. Mm-hmm. I did think it was pretty powerful how um, I, I I don't have uh, Renary, Renary's the, Ren, uh, I don't have her kids' names memorized. Like Renary, Jason, just Jason, Luke, Jason, Jacaris, okay. and Lucaris, and then uh, Joffrey is the youngest. Oh, one, and right? Joffrey, who's an infant. Okay, okay, so Joffrey, Jac okay, Luke, and anyway, um, it was interesting how like they had just lost their father and they're like we're in the same boat and and she's like we can't even bring that up like don't even say that uh -huh. out loud, you know and uh and then they went over and comforted and kind of it seemed like made a little alliance with um they're now i guess half sisters 
Yeah, no, they step or something. Yeah, they, they've they're all like on the black side, basically. Yeah, but that wasn't immediately apparent before this episode, I guess. Like we, all, I mean, I guess we always kind of assume that Damon uh-huh. would be allied with Renera, but or, but yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because the marriage ties, the Valerians would be on their side. Yeah, but before and, this, they weren't married. Well, no, Renera is married to Lenar. So the Valerians would would be on the black side, but but also, um, what's the the daughter? Their their daughter was married to uh, Lena. Was married to Damon. Oh yeah, Damon. But right. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Damon wasn't yeah. connected necessarily to the black side, but he kind of was by default because he doesn't like Viserys, and he's not going to help Viserys he like with the, anything. He doesn't like the high towers either. Right. So, yeah. 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 I guess. That, I guess. But it's just interesting how the kids went over and made that bond. You know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just... And the fact that Aemon went and stole their mother's dragon during her funeral is going to really cement that. Yeah, for sure. That was that was sneaky, man. I thought that scene was so cool with Aemon kind of claiming um, Vagar. I, I mean. Uh, maybe a little bit cheesy with this like little kid like commanding a dragon and the dragon's like okay maybe i won't burn you to a crisp but i thought it was awesome like seeing him climbing this huge dragon because vagar is the biggest dragon in the world at this point or the known world at least Uh and then vagar kind of like slowly like lumbering up and taking Uh flight um even though i'm definitely on the side of the blacks at this point and i'm like and I've read the book, so I know that Eamon becomes the writer of Vagar, but I'm just like, Vagar, you should have had like better judgment, right? Like Eamon is just kind of this annoying kid right now. I kind of like him up until he comes, to, you know, is super abusive to his cousins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I, I guess last episode I liked him. He was more of like a victim. More sympathetic, um, yeah. And more sympathetic. But this one, he was definitely like calling out the Rhaenyra's children on their parentage and being like, I stole your, or I guess he didn't say I stole your mom's no, dragon. I, but... I, I don't think, okay, so just play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Like, first of all, he wasn't the one that threw the first punch, right? Like that was um, one of the sisters. He um, was about, okay. All right. Continue. Well, and second, and I think that he's been bullied for most of his life. And I feel like it's kind of common for people that have been bullied really severely to also like, if they find that they have a power advantage. So I kind of also use that because that's, they've seen that modeled so much in their life. Uh No. And so, and so he did restrain himself from like killing them. Right. And then he like, I don't know. Did he he, though? Yeah. He could have, he could have smashed him with a rock and he didn't. He like, yeah, I mean, but the positive is that he didn't kill his cousins. Well, like, well, okay. After he had just been getting beaten down by four, like if you have four people that are standing over you, like kicking you, worried that they're going to, yeah, they're you all your head. younger cousins. So I must have, younger. I must have not seen that scene right because in in my mind, I thought he was about to like bash in J- Jace's head, and then Luke was the one that jumps up and like cuts his eye and stops him from doing that but th- that was, was after like one been... time where he could have and then he kind of pulled, yeah, he back, pulled back and, and then they all jumped him i think i'm getting this series of events right but they all like jumped him started like kicking him on the ground and then he like pushed him off and then um i think had like hit one of them with the rock yeah that's how eyes, I remember it, Josh. and then the other one cut that cut his eye but like at that point, you know, like he could have, they could have kicked him to death, you know, like they could have killed him when he was on the floor. Come on, he's the biggest one. He could have just walked away. Not by much. I mean, I don't know the ages. I don't think like, they were going to kill him. Look, all I'm saying is that if you're on the floor being kicked by four people, then like you're going to respond with like as much force as you think it takes to get out of it. I feel like you can like use your words a little bit before it comes to that. No, no. I'm just, I'm just saying that. Like to me, it wasn't like o- obvious that he was like a super bad person in that scenario. Like, it, I, I think he did instigate it. I think that, like, obviously stealing the dragon like inflamed tensions and was like a pretty cruel thing to do. Uh-huh. But when you're ambushed by four people, and the one of them is the one that throws the first punch, 
like by that point alone you're kind yeah, of yeah but the one that throws the first punch is your younger female cousin like i don't know man they're like at, at that point like being female like they're all pretty small you know what i mean like there's not that much like size I mean, he's like, like a head taller i i don't i'm not buying this defensive i, I it's not, i'm not trying to like defend him per se i'm just saying that like his actions are like understandable like I don't think they they make him an evil. Person. Yeah, I think they're understandable. They're like, he, look, he took the dragon. There's what can he say? Like, I'm sorry, you know, clearly not. And so I, I get why he was aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah I, I get I'm, I get why they were both aggressive. Right. But I still feel for yeah the Rhaenyra's children a bit more. I think. It's just so interesting because this is exactly leading in, like it's it's so well mirroring the conflict amongst the adults too, right? Like, oh yeah, how, you know, like yeah, we can talk about, but how Allison kind of has the upper hand because she has the like, you know, ear of the king in a lot of ways. Like, but- I, I would, I mean, I would disagree. I think that the blacks definitely had the upper hands up until this point. Because they had the dragons. I mean, so the greens, the only dragons they had were Sunfire and um, does, uh, what's what's the youngest? Does uh, Helena, Helena flies on Dreamfire, doesn't she? Yeah, I'll believe you. I mean, they said that Aemid was the only one that didn't. So I'm assuming she has a dragon. So, I mean, at this point, Sure, they, uh, Allison has the ear of the king, but Viserys isn't going to turn on Rhaenyra, and he's made that clear. No matter what signs of the parentage of his grandchildren, he's not, he's not turning on her. And so things would mostly stay the same until he dies. And then if, if the Greens decide they want to make a play for the throne, well, the Blacks have all the dragons. And I mean... Up until that point, that's all that matters. Now that they have Vagar, they have basically the biggest, baddest dragon around, right. which is huge in terms. This is like, I mean, and Otto Hightower says so. He's like, right. this it was a sacrifice worth like we would have made like hundreds yeah. or thousand times over just because of how hugely it shifted the pi- power dynamics. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I. For me, the thing with the Blacks, and, and this is why I really kind of wanted to get into, I still want to talk about some of the character moments in here, but it just seems like the Blacks, like, and I talked about this on Discord, it seems like if, like, their claims to the throne is so screwed up because of these, like, bastard children and the fact that, like, if she, okay, here's here's my, like, worst case scenario if the Blacks take over in my mind. Like, her and Damon have a kid. Um, that kid, like, um, either the whole kingdom is like oh that's obvious like the other two kids are obviously bastards he should rule or he's a targaryen so there's like a pretty likely chance that he's like super ambitious and power hungry and like maybe a little bit insane and he's like oh my brother wow. my half brother that's sitting on the throne like is not legitimate i'm gonna make a play for the throne and then like he would probably be supported by most people because he's like obviously the only like legitimate right. heir so that so like if if her and Rene, if her and Damon have a kid, then just by that kid's existence, it's gonna like screw up like any you know other. Well, that's still a step her. away, right? Because Renera would still be Renera would be the queen and would rule for a while. You know, maybe who knows? Yeah, but but we we're talking a lot about like legitimate like solidifying your claim to the throne, and a lot of that has right. to do with your heirs. Well, I think, I think that's that what if, the show is really showing us. If Renera became queen, and then it would follow that, well, the king decided who would follow after. So Renera would then decide who would follow after. And I mean, this that's why there's so much conflict is because it's not Jaharis literally made it seem so that like he selected the next male in line for the throne um over uh Rainus. Oh, sorry what's her name Rainus, yeah Rainus. and so now everybody's like oh this issue's been settled it goes to the next male 
And then suddenly Viserys is like, boy, hold on. No, it's going to go back to who I say it is, uh, Mm -hmm. who I want to be the heir. And um, so I I don't know. I guess I I think that if Rhaenyra became queen and solidified her power, then, I mean, it is an issue for another day. And certainly it happens with like the Blackfire rebellions later on in the Targaryen history that... um, issues come up with legitimizing bastards so i'm not saying it wouldn't happen but maybe maybe it would maybe it yeah would. it's a good point though josh i mean that hypothetical is could like definitely that's just, happen yeah, that's kind of how i see like i don't see around that any way around that happening kind of uh-huh. if, if for nara versus like with uh you know if fuzeris just changed his mind then like the succession is pretty clear on like the the high castle side of things you know well she could just you know she becomes queen she could just complain about the issue to laris uh strong and he would just kill them her her kids or yeah the... he would just he would just take care of it <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful what you say around that guy yeah you do careful what you wish for man so is just going back to that i'm not sure they don't really talk about in the books where Laris's loyalties lie. Uh-huh. Um, and I mean, in this, it definitely seems like, or at least he's alluding to his loyalties lie to Allison. And maybe that's because he sees that he can, you know, gain the most by supporting her over uh-huh. Rhaenyra. I, is there any like subtle, like he, like he's romantically interested in Allison. I, I like, I'm not sure if seems like it may be kind of hinting at that in the show. Okay. That's what Hayden thought in our last review. He, he brought up the fact that he was already like sitting at the table eating. Like he felt like he, just things like the small things made him seem like he was real comfortable around her and was maybe trying to establish that connection he was staring at her the whole time. He, he come, yeah. I mean, the relationship is definitely not proper between the Lord of Heron Hall and the Queen. Lots of improper relationships going on. Yeah, lots, lots of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Ryan, you said you were on the black side. Josh, did you do you have an official? I think side I, that you're I, taking. I think I'm saying greens. You're back to the greens. Back to the greens. So you were green through like the first five episodes and then you went black in episode six and now you're back to greens. I'm back to greens. I agree that adult Allison, I, I feel like became a lot darker. Younger, youthful Allison, well, I liked her a lot more than Rhaenyra. Right. Especially because... Yeah. Rhaenyra like or I mean yeah Rhaenyra swears on her mother's grave she just lies flat out to Alicent and you know Alicent is like wants to do her best to to amend things between them but I think that's kind of like the last flaw or the last straw is when she realizes that Rhaenyra lied and that lie got her dad kicked out and sent back to um I forget where the high towers are from. Old town. Old town. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, I'm on the green side too, with the caveat of I like the the black children better. So if I could take the if I could take Allison over Rhaenyra, but with uh, but with uh, Rhaenyra's children, because Allison's children just they, they suck. They're they do the worst. But Allison is pretty young and like would be able to you know like you said rule a pretty long time and then hopefully like i really don't see Aegon as being nearly as bad as joffrey i see him like a youthful kind of drunk like enjoys his wine a little bit too much but i haven't seen him really do anything like super cruel like joffrey did yeah that's fair joffrey like rejoiced in violence and death and suffering you know like yeah this kid this kid does not do that that we've seen at least he just yeah wine. that's fair that's probably a little a little rash of me but i i really dislike him He's he's a very dislikable guy because he reminds you of like right. anybody that's like spoiled and pampered that you know and like and like you know kind of um right. He reminds yeah. me more of like an Ambrose from Name of the Wind than a yeah. Joffrey. Good call. Good 
good comparison. real real punchable face but not necessarily you know we don't need to kill him you just yeah just needs a good good whipping you know just just uh-huh. get, get out there and not not like an abusive weapon but like get out there and like get with some shape, sense you know? into him I, i'm okay. not i don't know i just think like god like learn you know get get with my life a little bit like go you know go out there get some hard knocks under your belt come back and i think you'd be a good ruler so one thing that they left ambiguous which would just just to connect it to what we were talking about this would definitely affect my support of the blacks um they left it ambiguous whether or not uh Rainier and Damon knew about Sir Coral or Coral and Leonor's uh like ruse to uh-huh. to kill somebody else and run away I think they did because Damon it looked like Damon like broke a servant's neck that looked kind of like Leonor yeah. and they used that person in place of land yeah, it was too dark i couldn't tell what was happening there is that yeah, what happened he, he went he went on a staircase and broke somebody's neck and then that's the last we saw yeah yeah and and, and they do talk about damon's kind of saying like or rhaenyra admits that she does love land or probably not like a romantic love but like you know love of companionship and um and and then Damon says something like, "Well, this is the best you can do for him in this situation." And so, if it's if they kind of conspire with Leonor to like let him be free with his love, I would definitely like them a mo- lot more than if Rhaenyra and Damon are like, you know what, like we just need to kill this guy and then we can be together. I'm I'm and- like ninety five percent certain they knew because in their little monologue at the end they say like everybody would be fearful of what we would do. Like they would whisper, but only we would know the truth of what actually actually happened. And so like, to me, that's saying to me, that was saying like, everybody's going to assume how ruthless we are and we'll know that we're not actually that ruthless. We Well, it it could, it could mean that everyone whispers that they killed them, but only they know the truth that they actually did. To me. Yeah, I guess. That's how I took it before I saw what actually happened. I think that's kind of what you're meant to kind of think, but then when it showed you that he got away, then right. I think it takes on like a different meaning of like definitely it, as events were unfolding, yeah. you were supposed to be like slowly coming to this horrible realization that they're going to kill him, and then they don't. Right. And then yeah. So yeah. that that was that was a good twist. That I mean, so I guess we're all leaning on the side that Damon and Rainier were being merciful. They weren't actually out to kill Leonor. This was just an easy way to get Leonor to be with his love, go off free from responsibilities, free from raising somebody else's children. Uh huh. I I mean, it seems like, and and he did, he did kind of, he didn't like being in King's Landing or just like sitting around. He wanted to be out like adventuring or battling at the Stepstones and Rhaenyra had forbid him in the past. Right. So so everyone's happy except for Rhaenys and Corlys and their children Rhaenyra's children they're those kids are scarred yeah they lost their real father and their pretend father and gained an uncle father yeah and well, and I would some, not want Damon to be my father. <laughs> and gained some step some, some stepsisters that they that they seem to. Well, you know. I mean, you say that I, I don't think I'd want him to be my father either. But his girls seem to be like fairly stable, yeah, probably so. because of their mom. She yeah. seemed like yeah. a great person. Yeah, yeah, she did. She seems yeah. like one of the few like genuinely good people in all. Too Westeros. good, too good for Westeros or Essos. Uh, yeah. I, the Damon seemed to um, be a good dad to the daughter that had a dragon, and then kind of yeah, a, exactly a father to the one that didn't have a dragon. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. I think that's I think that kind of shows who Damon is up to this. And I kind of I said it is like he's nice to like Targaryens, not nice to people who aren't Targaryens. So I think he just respects the blood of the dragon and his daughter who has a dragon. He's like, oh yeah, she has the blood of the dragon and the daughter who doesn't. He's like, she's not my daughter. Okay, we're low on time, but quickly uh, let's wrap by just everyone say who won the episode, who lost the episode. Uh, I'm going to have to say Allison lost the episode. 
she because we saw her for what she truly was yeah and but i but on the flip side i'm gonna say that um Eamon won the episode lost an eye but came to dragon oh Fair. so this is like people not like the greens one yeah the yeah, character like who the like characters. did the most to advance their cause and the character who lost the most I, I don't know how you could dispute Eamon winning this episode. You get the biggest, baddest dragon around, become a dragon rider, an eye is a small price to pay. Okay, and your loser? Probably the green children, or the, sorry, the black children, because they're, they lost their mom their dad you know well no they've still got their mom yeah yeah oh well sorry sorry uh, i guess and damon's children lost lost their their mom rainier's children lost their dad yeah that's fair um also yeah damon damon probably did win the episode i think damon also advanced his cause decently whatever his cause is whatever his cause is he probably advanced it in marrying (laughs) rainier I know mean, something he's been trying to do for a while. He failed the first time. I think his cause is fire and blood. <laughs> Just any way possible. Let's have fire and blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, loser. King Viserys, once again, poor guy. But yeah, his children are not playing nicely and they are just now completely ignoring him and treating him like a puppet king and just waiting for him to die. I don't understand how Viserys allows Otto Hightower to come back after he dismissed him for not doing what was in his best interest. I think it's meant to show that he does not have control on what's happening, really. Yeah, like, Allison was like, Allison. bring him back, and he's back. Like, Allison, def- yeah, Allison, like, tried to find, like, a direct order of the king, like, in front of the whole court. Maybe not the whole court, but like a substantial. Yeah, amount. if I was Viserys, I'd be like, "You're queen, so I can't execute you, but you're going in the black cells." Wow, <laughs> don't let don't let Sydney hear that. <laughs> Sydney's like, "Uh, <laughs> Sydney wouldn't do that to me." But if she does, if she best does. watch out. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap for episode seven. Three more episodes. In the next episode, we're getting another time jump. So the kids are once oh, are again we? getting older. Oh, yeah, that's right. Eye patch Eamon coming. Yeah. In. Yeah. Yeah. The eye patch. A- older Eamon is here. I-, I assume all the kids are getting older. The, the, yeah. The, the only yeah. actor who changed, I'm still kind of salty about, is the is Allison and Renera. But yeah, but you realize now, I don't think you realized at first why they had to do that. They had to because their kids are getting older. Like if the teen. Allison and Rhaenyra actresses were still around or the young 20 teen actresses it, it wouldn't make sense that their children were the same age as them like they had to age them up oh they make up I don't know I, I still submit that no they man they can't have enough. kids that are they can't have actors who are 20 and the and the parent actors are also 20 they've got to at least be like 30 and 20 okay fair enough fair enough I mean I'm with you they were great and and yeah it, it, it is unfortunate but the show is such that they're really going yeah. through the years they had they to. are yeah yeah everything else has been done really well and that was done well enough that i'm not really salty over it but are they just doing two actors or actresses to portray them or is there going to be a third one i don't think they're doing i mean they may jump around a little bit but i think after this time jump in the next episode i think that's pretty much gonna we're gonna ride out the rest of them because at that point, like everything's been set, and I think they're just kind of ready to go with the rest of the events. Because I think the the actual like events of Dance with Dragons are take place over the course of two years total. Well, it depends. There's more that like kind of continues on afterwards. So who knows how long the show goes for? Um, there are some one. Fi- there are some younger kids who they may, might want to age up more. But I think they're gonna stick with the next set of kid actors. One one quick question, and I know we're all on time. Do we know about how many seasons this is gonna run for? I've been asked that a few times, and I really don't know. 
I mean, they renewed it right away after the first episode. They renewed for, renewed for season two. I don't know. I don't know. How I would say that. four. I think like three or four seasons would be right. I think so. so. I well, like Rings of Power, I think they've said five seasons, four seasons. They've, they've like announced that they're doing that. I don't think we have the same situation here. I think yeah. four seasons would be a sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we don't want it to linger too far. In four seasons, they could really have just banger episode after banger episode and get through yeah, a ton of like, cool stuff. Holy cow, man. Yeah, every episode has been so freaking good. So yeah. Nice. All right. All right, guys. See you later. See you guys. Bye.